We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, today is the third Sunday, the third week of Advent, also known as Gaudeti Sunday, Gaudeti Sunday, uh, Gaudeti meaning in Latin, rejoice. Well, uh, Christ is nearer than when we first believed, so we've got a lot to rejoice about, uh, even those of us going through a difficult time. Uh, the fact that Christ is coming to us, Christ is with us. So on this uh, third Sunday, we light the third of our candles for, uh, during Advent. And the third candle, uh, this one here, um, symbolising, uh, representing John the Baptist. So here's the theme for the, for the day. John the Baptist, who was the forerunner for the Messiah. So the first one, very quickly, the patriarchs, um, the prophets, and now the third Sunday, for John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, just and true, to you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be led to witness to him who is the Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus our Saviour and King of the ages. Blessed be God forever. So now we continue with the collects for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate once again this foretaste of the heavenly banquet, let us call to mind our failure to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength, and our neighbour as well as ourselves. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the collect and readings of the third Sunday of Advent. So let us pray. The collect for today. O Lord Jesus Christ, who to your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way, by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign with, with you, with the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from 
the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 61, beginning to read at verse 1. The servant of the Lord said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Parts of chapter 1. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might testify, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they have been sent, now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words I speak in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
30 years ago, while his wife was having a caesarean operation, the very formidable looking uh, midwife ordered the young father to go back to his wife's hospital room and to collect uh, a baby girl. And so very nervously he went off as quickly as he could. Well, that dad, me, still has that baby grow. In fact, a bundle of baby grows somewhere up in the loft. And we will soon be emptying the loft, ready for moving. And we will be saying to our daughter, who is now 30, uh, with her own home, her own partner, uh, but the loft is full of her childhood, the time when she was a baby. And uh, we should say to her, collect what you want. Parents will recognise that. Well, I will keep the baby grow. The first one that she wore. But most parents will pass on their children's clothes, or they might well discard them, recycle them, as their children grow. Well, talking about discarded clothes from children, on the beaches of the Isle of Lesbos was found many baby grows, uh, clothes from young children, clothes from grannies, granddads, mums and dads, refugees who had discarded their clothes as they landed from the ocean, was probably those garments. Those clothes were all wet and they had to change. These refugees, migrants, um, having to, um, making a very dangerous journey across the sea, many of them uh, spending their life savings in order to uh, book a place on what were, what are very dangerous boats, not worthy enough to cross the Mediterranean or the English Channel. Well, I'm highlighting the recent years when we've seen so many uh, refugees um, on the news, on the television screens, we received refugees here in our own city of York. But three years ago, in the church of St James, James's Church in Piccadilly in London, they did, uh, the, uh, there was a, um, an artist, Arabella, um, Arabella Dorman, who created this artwork where discarded clothes were all gathered together and she created what, in a way, was a little bit like a huge chandelier of children's clothes, the clothes of adults. Baby grows, a woman's skirt, a tracksuit top, gloves, and so many other bits and pieces of discarded uh, clothes representing humanity in flight and the pilgrim looking up could not fail to be deeply moved as they contemplate the violent fragmentation experienced by those who had once inhabited these garments. While many of these refugees are now in limbo, suspended in between a past that is lost because they can't go back and a future that they can't claim, an uncertain future. And many of them now languish in uh, detention centres, awaiting their fate at the hands of officials and form fillers, at the mercy of politicians, gatekeepers, seeking to control immigration quotas in order to keep their voters happy. And the artist invites the pilgrim, invites the pilgrim to embark on their own journey of understanding and empathy for the rootless and volatile experience of those caught between the past and the future, stuck in limbo. Well, one of the themes of Advent is waiting, waiting in limbo, suspended from a past that we cannot return to, to a, 
in, in between the, the past and a future that is, for all of us, uncertain. And uh, yes, this time of limbo, when we've had such a difficult year, uh, praise God that some people, uh, many people are, re are receiving the, the vaccine. Um, amazing that it's been developed. We hope that uh, poor people in our world will have just a, 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 an equal uh, share of this vaccine as the wealthier countries. But we do not know what refugees, unless you are a refugee, unless you have experienced being fleeing from your home, we do not know what it is to be a refugee, to, to now be in limbo. Many of them kept as prisoners in very uh, terrible, terrible conditions. I asked myself many a time just how I would feel about that. How would you feel to be a refugee? Well, this artwork, artwork invites us to explore themes of identity and witness. Who are the refugees who wore these clothes? If you look up, who, who were they? Who are they? And the truth is that they are just like you and me. But how are they seen by others? How are they treated? How have they been welcomed and cared for? Where are they now? Are they living under the threat of exclusion and rejection and a life of aimless wandering, looking up at that work, artwork suspended above the nave and this time of the year, uh, looking up when it was first created in the gloom of a December, late December uh, afternoon and the chandelier of clothes disappears into a, a shadow. You can't see the clothes anymore. And so it is that those, uh, those um, refugees and immigrants, one moment they're on our television screens and the next we've forgotten all about them. But they're still there, suffering. Well, as we make our own Advent journey, suspended as we are between Christ's first coming and his second coming, when he comes in glory, in the Gospel reading, John the Baptist is showing us a way to live. He gives the example of turning attention away from the self and how full we are of ourselves. No, I'm not the Messiah or the prophet. No, I'm not Elijah. What does it matter who I am? I'm not interested in me, but I am interested in the one who is coming. The one whose very sandals I'm not able to, to undo. The very presence of God. The very presence of God in our midst. And uh, Baptist about to say, I baptise you with water, but he, Jesus, anoints you with the Holy Spirit of God. And being anointed by the Spirit of God, it transforms our outlook on the world. I need to hear the voice of those who are crying in the wilderness, in the wildernesses of this world. I'm still haunted, as perhaps you are, by one family's tragedy. Um, this tragedy had a human face when we saw uh, a three-year-old toddler called Aylan. Uh, dressed in a red t-shirt, blue shorts and trainers, lying face down, dead, with the waves lapping around his little body. And uh, not only he, but his older brother and his mother didn't make it. All three of them drowned and his grieving father survived and is now all alone. They had escaped the bonds of Syria in order to perish in the waters of the Mediterranean. How cruel. How senseless. Well, let's not pretend that the world's uh, wildernesses are real challenges for national and local governments in how to resource the care and salvation that is needed for our brothers and sisters fleeing, and they are our brothers and sisters, fleeing unimaginable terrors across the world. 
But the church, as the nation's conscience, must be the voice that awakens consciences. It is so, so easy to allow uh, life to pass us by, to pass, by, pass us by uh, the privileged, we who are privileged, who are protected and cocooned, feeling safe. And as John Donne, uh, the priest poet in the 17th century, wrote, no man is an island entire of itself, We are part of a greater whole. We are part of the whole of humanity. And how true this is. In South Africa, a poster stated that the body of Christ has AIDS. Well, with the refugees, uh, Christ lying in the lapping waves of the Mediterranean, where many of us uh, going on holiday will uh, sunbathe and enjoy ourselves where people, humanity, um, suffers. And so then we hear the voice that cries in the wilderness, the voice of Christ who comes as the refugee. just want to finish um, with the words of a Somali poet, Walson Shire, who now lives in London. And it's called, No One Leaves Home. No one leaves home unless Home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border. When you see the whole city running as well, you have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. No one crawls under fences. No one wants to be beaten or pitied. No one chooses refugee camps or strip searches where your, your body is left aching, or prison, because prison is safer than a city on fire. I want to go home, but home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of a gun. And no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore, unless home told you to. Leave your clothes behind, Caught, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, and drown. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. You keep us waiting. You, the God of all time, want us to wait for the right time in which to discover who we are, where we must go, who will be with us, and what we must do with our lives. So, thank you, Lord, for the waiting time. You keep us looking. You, the God of all space, want us to look in the right and wrong places for signs of hope, for people who are hopeless, for visions of a better world which will appear among the disappointments of the world we know. We thank you, Lord, for the looking time. You keep us loving. 
You, the God whose name is love. You, the God of love, want us to be like you. To love the loveless and the unlovely and the unlovable. To love without jealousy or design or threat. And most difficult of all, to love ourselves. So thank you, Lord, for the loving time. And in all this, you keep us through hard questions with no easy answers, through failing where we hoped to succeed and making an impact when we felt that we were useless, through the patience and the dreams and the love of others. And through Jesus Christ and his spirit, you keep us. So thank you, Lord, for the keeping time. And for now and forever. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Wherever you are, the peace of the Lord be always with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation, confident that your promise will be fulfilled. We now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine are poured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks, and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day. When your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. And bring us with Blessed Mary, St Joseph and all the saints. To feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Those of us unable to receive communion physically, the body and blood of Christ, we trust that we can receive Christ spiritually, that Christ is already with us, he's with you in your heart. And so he comes to each one of us today in order to fill our hearts with his love, his strength, his courage, and his resurrection life. Final post communion uh, comment. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. 
and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and among those whom you love this Advent and forevermore. Amen.